So welcome to the Quick Start webinar. If you are just tuning in for the very first time, my name is Noah Harris. You can call me Noah, Coach Noah. Uh, every single Thursday at one o'clock Eastern time, we host this webinar, the Quick Start webinar, and this is all about practicing private money lending um, fundamentals, best practices, and it's all about staying sharp, right? This is brought to you by the Private Money Club. I'm real. I'm I'm curious here, how many of you are currently in the Private Money Club? Uh, say, I'm in the club, in the chat. Type it in the chat. Type it in the chat. Uh, my webinars, are. I try to make them as super interactive as possible, so make sure you warm up your fingers. Make sure your thumbs are good if you're on your phone, all right? Because uh, I'm going to ask you some questions, and really how I teach this, this uh, first 30 minutes really depends on you. Depends on you know what you guys are, know already and and what you want to practice okay so if you're brand new to this webinar and you're like i'm not in the private money club yet but this sounds awesome if you're brand new type brand new in the chat box if that's you type brand new in the chat box if that's you all right cool i love it i love it i love it so uh every thursday one o'clock this is what we do this is what we do so i'm gonna kick things off here by telling you guys um real quick like uh, anytime i teach a class anytime i teach a webinar I do my absolute best to make this sound as difficult as possible. I do my absolute best to make sure that every single person that's on this call realizes that private money lending is extremely uh, risky, right? If you if a person doesn't know what they're doing, if they don't know what questions to ask to borrowers, if they don't know what questions to ask when it comes to looking at deals and how to analyze deals, a person can lose money, right? Let's not let's not. Uh, you know, just make this sound amazing. Like we're here to practice. We're here to get great. Yes, it's a great way for a person to make a double digit rate of return, have it secured by collateral that's worth more. Of course, everyone knows that. But one of the big reasons why I love teaching this webinar, I feel as though one of my missions in life these last couple of years has been to educate people as much as I possibly can about private money lending because I'm a true believer that it can create the ultimate win-win for people looking to borrow to fund real estate deals and for people looking to put their money to work okay i truly believe that so but there's a lot of folks out there that are just winging it and that's not the way that we do things here at the private money club okay so everyone understands this give me a big oh yeah real estate investing is risky i'm going to share case studies today all right i'm going to share case studies i'm going to share uh case studies that um that are actually mine and my wife's like we're going to share you like deals that we just closed on yesterday. And it's important to know that like hey if I say hey here's what my lender made in this transaction. Uh, here's what we made in this transaction that you don't expect to make identical numbers like nothing in real estate is ever going to go the exact same real estate is unique that's what makes it special there's no piece of real estate that's the same and there's no. Uh, deal that ever goes the same. My wife and I have been doing this business for over 15 years, and it seems like we always learn something new each and every day. And that's why we practice. That's why we meet here every Thursday to help us stay great. I'm not an accountant. I'm not an, a real estate um, a, attorney, realtor, contractor, or anything of this nature. I am simply a real estate investor who is sharing my experiences, trying to help everybody that's on this call uh, uh, gain success in their business and life. All right. So that's a little bit about us and what to expect with this webinar here. I hope you understand why we cover these things. Um, it, it is lunchtime in some places. And if Mike McIntyre is on the call here today, uh, I, I don't see his name yet. Maybe he is, but you know what, Mike, Mike gave me a, a, a hard time this week. And I always laugh because, um, this quick start webinar is about taking action. It's not about just listening to this crazy person talk about private money lending for 60 minutes. It's about what are you gonna do with the knowledge? What are you gonna do when we log off the call, right? What are your action steps? And I always joke on this call, I say, hey, this isn't about just making turkey sandwiches and listen to Noah Harris talk about private money lending while you eat your lunch. It's about taking action. So on Monday, Mike McIntyre, a Private Money Club premier member sent me this picture of turkey sandwiches and my guess is that mike bought all of these turkey sandwiches and he's going to be eating them for the next five weeks during our thursday call and that's a great system that mike implemented into his life he no longer has to make the turkey sandwich it's already made for him so mike i see you thank you for the text message my friend you are awesome so if you're logging on for the first time 
Uh, it's important to know who you're learning from and who you're surrounding yourself with today. My name is Noah Harris. I'm a real estate investor. Uh, today, we're going to be doing case studies with a company called Revive Homes. Uh, Revive Homes is my wife and I's real estate investing company. It was established in 2013, going on 11 years. And this weekend is Christy and I's 11 year anniversary. So right around the same time that we got married, we started this real estate investment company together. So um, we've been doing this quite some time. Revive Homes is our flipping company. We're out of Columbia, South Carolina. Real quick, I'm curious, where are you guys from? If I haven't met you yet, type it in the chat. Where are you tuning in from? I love to see, I would love to see all 50 states covered uh, one, one of these days. We've gotten really close, really close a couple of times. So I actually go back and I read the transcripts to see. I wanna, I wanna be able to say 50 different states are represented on these calls. Awesome, awesome, I love it. I love it. I love it. Shreveport. All right. Tuning in from Cola. All right. There we go. There we go. Um, our goal for you on this call and anyone that Christy and I have the pleasure of coming into contact with is item number three down there. Like our goal for everyone that learns something from us is a 100% track record. If you're on this call and you're a real estate investor and you're looking to learn how to borrow money from from private individuals, private lenders. My goal for you is to have a 100% track record with those lenders. And if you're on this call and you're a lender, my goal for you is to have a 100% track record with lending your money and getting it back, right? That's what we're aiming for every single time that we do business. And, and I, I, I can't stress that enough, right? Uh, ask the tough questions, um, do the due diligence, inspect what you expect, 100% track record. What's Warren Buffett's number one rule of real estate investing? What's his number one rule? Anybody know? Type it in the chat if you know. Don't lose money. Don't lose money, right? So that's what we're going to work on every single week. And private money lending is relationship based, you guys. You know, one of the things. So in addition to doing this weekly webinar class, I teach a program called the Accelerator Coaching Program for the Private Money Club. And what we do is we collapse time frames. So I take everything I know about private money lending. I condense it down into uh, eight weeks of webinars and coaching. And so if you are on this call and you're like, man, I really want to get great at this, then I would encourage you to sign, set up a time where you can talk to someone from the private money club to see if the accelerator program is a good fit for you and can help you hit your goals. This is a program that's for borrowers and lenders. So just like today's call, on today's call, I'm going to teach you from the perspective of the borrowers and the lenders. And one thing I've learned is that if you want to get great at lending money, let's understand what the borrower is thinking, right? And what's important to them. And if we want to get great at borrowing money, let's understand what's important to the lenders and what lenders want to see and should be seeing, right? So we teach both sides of the coin in that program. I'm going to invite Jacob to just throw a link up there. So we have something at Private Money Club called the Blueprint Phone Call. And there's a lot of different programs that Private Money Club offers. Uh, this might be one for you. Maybe you're thinking, oh, you know what? I need to learn how to estimate repairs. I, need a, I just need help. I, I'm not sure what I need. What I would encourage you to do at any given point in time is just click that link that Jacob just posted in the chat box and schedule a, a time to talk with the PMC team. Uh, lots of times people will ask, Noah, how do I register for the accelerator? That's the link right there schedule a call with Jacob and the team, and um, they can uh, talk to you about how to enroll for that class, right? This is absolutely relationship based, what we're doing here. It's all, when's the absolute best time to have your next borrower lined up? If you're a lender when, and you got your money coming back to you, when's the best time to have that money? Absolutely. And if you're a borrower, when's the best time to have your next lender lined up? Derek said yesterday, James said yesterday, Aisha says right now, yeah, for sure. So we got to start building these relationships in, with private. If you're new to private money club, I saw a lot of people were, here's what private money lending, private money club is. It's a platform, right? Where borrowers can meet lenders. Simple as that, right? What I help people do is stand out in the crowd, right? If you're a borrower, how do I help you stand out with how you present your deals? How do you talk? How do you communicate? What's your profiles look like? Things like that. Now, Private Money Club, I'm going to give you some assignments, okay? I'm going to give you some assignments. Private Money Club, it, there's two different ways to enroll in Private Money Club. The first one's free. They have a free option. Why wouldn't you do that? If you're brand new, you're like, oh my gosh, like poke around. And then there's a premier membership. 
where you can message people and have more interaction. I'll talk about that a little bit later, right? So here's the game plan. Every single Thursday, we start right at one o'clock. We keep it real estate. We've got a really cool type of real estate that we're gonna be talking about here today. Uh, mobile and manufactured homes, lending and borrowing on manufactured and mobile home deals. Has anyone invested in mobile homes before? Has anyone, has anyone ever flipped a manufactured house or had rental properties that were mobile or manufactured homes? Type it in the chat if you have. I'm curious to see what, how, what the experience level here is, Christy. Let's see, let's see. Okay, cool. No, not yet, not yet. How many of you like have dropped, driven by or you know, how many of you are like, you know it like in your bones that there is an absolute opportunity in mobile and manufactured home investing? The way housing prices are, everything that's going on in the world, are you seeing the opportunity here? Is that is that why some of you are on the call? All right, cool. So we keep this real estate, right? I know Private Money Club offers different things and that, you know, um, there'll be deals in there. Sometimes there's people financing tractors and all kinds of stuff, forklifts. We're talking houses. Uh, so if you're on the call and you want to learn how to borrow funds for single family homes, multifamily homes, duplexes, Airbnbs, rental properties, you, you're in the right place, right? That's what we're talking about here today. Participation is encouraged. You guys are doing a great job of that. Mobile homes? Yes, mobile homes. Here we go. Um, if you have a question, ask them in the Q&A section in the webinar. Okay, so you can network and ask questions in the chat. There's a good chance if you ask a question in the chat, I will not see it because the chat moves so quick. But if you ask a question in the Q&A box, I'll definitely check that every uh, 10 minutes or so while we're on the call. Okay, so Q&A is in the Q&A chat in the chat. I got my PMC team in the chat. What's up guys? Jacob say hi. So we know you're still here. If you have any questions about anything I'm talking about, you can uh, tag Jacob and Jacob can throw up a link or, or set something up to talk to you one-on-one -on -one. and all experience levels are welcome. What I love about private money club is the same level of respect, encouragement, and love goes into someone who's brand new. Uh, just like anyone who's done over a thousand real estate deals, right? So no matter where you're starting from, we have R-E-S-B-E-C-T for every single person on this call. Let's go. All right, so here's the moves. So I'm going to encourage every single person on this call. We're going to practice some fundamentals. We're going to get into some education, and then we're going to talk about mobile and manufactured home investing. But every single call, this is the quick start call. This isn't a, the turkey sandwich call, right? So we got to make sure that we're taking what we're learning and we're implementing it and we keep the momentum going. All right. So here's some things. All I want you to do is at least pick one, pick one at least. Maybe you do two or three. Maybe you've done all five. I don't know. Or all six. Take what I'm teaching you here today and practice, 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 practice. Right. Um, if you're unsure of like, gosh, I got to figure out something to do. What's my next move? Schedule a call with Jacob. The link's right there. It's called the blueprint. Schedule a call with a team member and they can help you. Uh, lay out everything that Private Money Club has for its members and how it can help you, all right? At the very least, I'm gonna encourage you to call, or excuse me, to hop on next week's call. So every single week we try to teach something new. So while you got your phone, all you gotta do is just say, hey, sir, can you schedule me for next Thursday at one o'clock for the Quick Start webinar? Quick Start webinar is scheduled for 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. next Thursday. Done, it's that easy, guys, all right? So just knock it out, do it right now so you can keep the momentum going. If you haven't created a PMC profile yet, go do it. It's free. There's a free edition. Poke around, see what it's all about. Then hop on uh, Leapfrog and join Premium once you see where all the what, where all the goodness is. Uh, I compare Private Money Club to like a fishing pond. A fishing pond where everybody in the pond is looking to, for funding or has funding, right? So imagine throwing your line in, catching something every time. So it's not like you're just talking uh, to, to to nobody that's listening. I used to spend a lot of time, especially on these calls, teaching elevator pitches like, hey, did you know you can make a double digit rate of return on your money and have it secured by a house worth much more? Uh, do you want to learn more? I don't teach the elevator pitch that much anymore because with Private Money Club, there's no need for it. It's just all about presenting your deals because everyone in there already understands the concept of what private money lending is. All right. Uh, some news coming up right now. We have, I believe, 11 students registered for the mobile home take action challenge today we're going to be talking about mobile homes and if you would like to take a course with one of the absolute best mobile home instructors in the entire country uh, she's going to be on this call you're going to meet her here in a minute christy duckett that class starts may 19th
okay may 19th so put that on your calendars if you like to uh learn more about what that looks like be like rick and schedule a call with jake all right cool great job rick uh next accelerator course starts in july we've got one running right now and uh, we are halfway through May's class, and it's been awesome. If you're on the current, I'm, I'm going to do a roll call right here. Bonus bonus points for everyone in my class. If you're in my class and you're on this call right now, type it in the chat. I'm curious. Bonus bonus points if you guys, if my students are in here right now. Or if you've took, taken the class in the past. Okay, cool. Love to see it. Love to see it. All right. Hey, what's up, Patrick? All right, Chanel. Hey, Chanel's tuning in. All right, good, good, good. Hey, Angie. All right, and yeah, Angie knows Yolanda. Love it, love it, love it. All right, cool. So this starts May uh, May nineteenth. We'll talk more about that, but that's what we have to look forward to here. Four weeks of coaching and support with the one and only Christy Duckett. All right, cool. So here we go. Private money lending. Let's get into some fundamentals. Right. Every single week we practice the fundamentals. Why do we do this? So we can stay sharp. Right. So we can. The goal here is the next four slides that I share with you. You master the verbiage so well that if someone asks you about what you do, what private money lending is, you can answer them in your sleep. You can repeat it back uh, without even thinking about it. It's a part of your subconscious. Just like we blink and breathe without having to think about it, we're going to be able to tell people what private money lending is, right? That's how great we're going to get, okay? That's how great we're going to get. So what is a private money loan? What is a private money loan? We are working with people as opposed to institutions or funds or banks, right? We are working with people, right? So if I'm talking to Yolanda, if I'm talking to James, if I'm talking to Tess, those are, and they, you know, I'm, I'm talking about, hey, do you, how would you like to put your money to work in one of Christy and I's deals? Would that, would that sound like a, a good thing for you, right? We're working with a person, okay? So the, the how I love to explain this to people, and again, I teach from the borrower and the lender side. So from a borrower's perspective, uh, what I might say if I'm if I'm um, explaining to someone who's unfamiliar with like what private money lending is, I'm going to try to make it as simple and relatable as possible to something that they can relate to. And one of the big things that I've found that's been the most success for us is if I tell someone who I know has funds and I know has resources and I know could, I could help them probably do better than they're doing right now, having it as an example sit in their savings account, right? By the way, how many of you know someone that could be a great private money lender and they don't know it yet? Type it in the chat. If you know someone who could, who would be a great private money lender, but they don't know it yet, type it in the chat. Say I do or whatever, right? Let me know. I'm curious because I'll give you some good. Oh, Jake Smalley's in the house. All right. Love to see it. Okay. So Jake, here's what I want you to do. Jake's a smart kid, just graduated or about to graduate from the University of South Carolina. He's a super savvy construction background, families in construction. I bet Jake has a, a whole community where he could go to and people understand real estate, but they might not quite know what private money lending is, right? So what Jake might do is he might say, hey, friends, families, colleagues, right? Lend me your ears. Here, here's the deal. Instead of having your money sit in a savings account, I, I'm buying real estate. And in, instead of going to the bank, what I do is I work with people, individuals, just like you. And I pay them a great rate of return on their money. And they're gonna be like, okay, that sounds like a scam. And Jake's gonna go, no, it's just like a bank. Just like a bank, right? Those four little words are gold. That's, this is what helps. This is what helps people connect the dots and realize that this isn't like a handshake deal, right? So Jake's gonna say, hey, remember when you bought your house Right, you bought your house, you got a mortgage, right? You went to the bank, they're gonna say yes. Okay, so you fill out all these pit, this stack of papers, right? You got a mortgage, you got a promissory note, um, uh, you're personally guaranteeing the loan, they're gonna say yes, yes, yes. And then before um, you close on the house, you had to call up State Farm and make sure that you got insurance and you listed the bank as being the lender, and they're gonna say yes, 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 yes. And, he's, and Jake's gonna say, I do the same exact thing. I do the same exact thing, right? For you. For my private money lenders so just like a bank i give you a mortgage i give you a promissory note i provide you with a personal guarantee i get the insurance set up with you listed on there right just like a bank would want so what jake just did is he added credibility he provided clarity to people and he's educating others on how all this works now that might not work right away but jake's planted that seed because the next question that person's going to ask is how much is the interest right they're curious right they're curious on the flip side of this if you're a lender 
One of the things I've been encouraging people to do and in my accelerator course and on this call, I've been telling you guys, go find real estate investors in your local area who are doing the business the right way. Ethics, integrity, they're doing a, a, maybe a good amount of business, good little volume, good little deal flow, right? Maybe that, maybe you got to go to like a local real estate investor association or something like that, right? So go have those conversations, find out who the players are and say, hey, look, instead of and ask them, hey, how are you funding your deals right now? And they're probably going to say uh, hard money lending or my own cash. And you can tell them the same thing. Hey, have you th ever thought about private money lending before? You know, what are you paying your hard money lenders? They're going to say, oh, 13%, two points. And you're going to say, whoa, that's a lot. What, what if I could do 12% and two points? And you didn't have to do uh, it, jump through a lot of the red tape that you're probably doing for the hard money lending company. Would, or would it be worth at least having a conversation about that with me? Right? And they're gonna be like, well, tell me more. I'm like, just like the hard money lending company, just like a bank, I'll, all I ask is for a mortgage, promissory note, da, da da da, just like a bank. So it's the same thing. We're just working both sides of the coins, right? All right, cool. Who's doing all those documents for borrowers? If I'm a private money lender, that is a great question. Who is drawing up our documents? On the count of three, three, two, one. Who's doing it? Who's drawing up the docs? A lawyer. A lawyer. A lawyer. A licensed professional every single time. Yes, yes, great. I love it. I love it. I love it. Right? I love it. So, we're going to, you know, one of the first things I, I'm going to slow it down a little bit because this is important. One of the first things I tell people if you're a borrower, you know, if you're just starting out, you're Jake, and you're just starting out, and you want to have great conversations. The, the person I would be wanting to have on my team, even before a real estate agent, even before a contractor, would be an, an attorney. I want to have my a lawyer figured out who is going to be doing my closings. And if my private money lender needs help drafting a mortgage, uh, any type of document, promissory note, I'm going to make sure that that lawyer and that attorney team is comfortable and wants to do those types of services for that person. Right. And I'm going to make the recommendation and they're going to be off to the races, but we always want to use licensed business professionals. Angie, ding, 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 ding. She's the winner, right? She got, she hit the nail on the head. All right. Next up, show me the money. Show me the money. So now people are like, okay, cool. Like I got the idea here. We're, it's just like a bank uh, mortgage. That makes sense. It's recorded. It's filed just like a bank would want, right? What kind of interest rates are we talking about here? Now, this is up to you. This is up to you, the borrower. This is up to you, the lender. But the idea here is have it figured out before you start having these conversations. So are you like me? Do you say, hey, we pay anywhere from 8 to 12% annualized interest. Each loan opportunity is unique, right? That's a good one. If you're on the, if you're a lender, what does that look like for you? Hey, I lend out anywhere from 10 to 15%. Each loan opportunity is unique. We're just figuring out the verbiage ahead of time. So as we start having these conversations, you know, we're kind of doing this elevator pitch thing, right? Today, guys, we're just talking about, but I like to look at it as like different floors, right? Different floors that you're, you're taking people up, which is fun. All right, so here's some of the documents that we provide every single time all right cool we got 80 84 and climbing on the on the call this is awesome so uh we provide a promissory note that outlines the terms of the loan we provide the mortgage or deed of trust which secures the loan uh with the real estate and then uh, we provide personal guarantees it holds the borrower personally liable for the loan and uh, we also get the insurance set up just like a bank would want so i'm going to list my lenders on the insurance as the lost payee right now there's more to it than this, okay? There's more things that I would want as a lender, like uh, lender's title policy and things like that. But from a conversation and communication standpoint, this is what's gonna get the ball rolling. This is what's gonna get people uh, wanting to have conversations and, and seeing that you're credible, seeing that you're serious and seeing that you've done this the right way, right? Jake says, great question. Jake, that's a question, but it's not in the Q&A box, but I'm going to answer it anyway because you are a great sport. Let me use your name in those examples. Uh, personal guarantee, any difference borrowing as an individual versus an entity? I would absolutely, you know, it's funny. You know, I'm not an attorney or an accountant, things like that, right? So I can't give legal advice. But I, what I will tell you for everyone that's on this call, if you don't have an LLC set up, it's going to be hard to borrow money because most hard money lending companies and the way that I'm teaching private money lenders should only be lending to entities, not to individuals. 
right? So, um, and, and there's there's some some laws and that you should look into like the Frank Dodd Act and things like that, where it can be a little gray area there. Like if someone, if I was lending to a person and I'm thinking that the person's gonna go flip that house and fix it up and sell it, but then the person actually moves into it, claims it as their primary residence unbeknownst to me, and then stops paying me payments. And I'm like, hey, wait a minute, I'm gonna foreclose on you. Now that person can come back and say, well, what are you talking about? You know, you, you're violating these lending laws because this is uh, my primary residence. So com- consumer, like mortgage home loans are in a whole different bucket than what we're talking about here on this call today. So to be taken seriously in the eyes of lenders, we wanna make sure that we have some sort of entity like an LLC set up. From my experience, I'm just speaking as a, from experience as a real estate investor who reads what the hard money lending companies are looking for and having an LLC entity a trust or something like that is one of them, right? So you should probably should do that too. Is a person should do that, right? I'm trying to stay compliant here, Jake, but you get the idea. You can send me a, a text message or phone call if you have any more questions on that. All right, cool, show me the money. All docs are prepared and recorded by licensed professionals. What makes private money lending great? The collateral. Well, we got to make sure that it's recorded and the whole wide, the whole world knows that you have a lien on that property. All right. So how do we do that? We make sure that we work with licensed business professionals, title companies, attorneys, and we inspect what we expect. We follow up and we make sure that the documents were recorded in the county that we're doing business in. All right. Cool. So that's our that's our practice right there. So this is how I use private money club and I'm, I'm telling you guys i'm encouraging you, encouraging you to do the same in inside private money club if i have a deal what i do and this is the little deal this is the little flow chart here i'm gonna cover this and then we're gonna hop into some mobile home investing i post a deal and at the same time i post a deal i also post in the private money club forum so i post in two different spaces on the platform and then i have the deal outlined and i have you know my bio in there and outlined but one of the big things that's, that's really important is having a call to action somewhere in the midst of describing your deal or posting on the forum. So I post on the forum, I, I, I post my deal, and that way I get as many eyes on the opportunity as possible within Private Money Club. All right? I think to post a deal, you have to be a premier member. I think anyone can post on the forum for free. That's why I just recommend going and just becoming a paid member. My call to action is and this is this is really important no one's just going to be lending money after having a a message uh uh, sent to you or you know like you gotta we gotta like build a relationship right we gotta get on the phone we gotta have a zoom call like this is a relationship-based business right if you were doing like dating you would want to meet the person you wouldn't want to just email them back and forth right so my call to action is saying it whatever you're posting Remember this, guys, in sales, communication, the only thing that we're selling is the next step, right? So when I'm making these posts about my deals or on the forum, I'm not asking people right away to wire the funds, am I? But what I am asking and what I am selling is the opportunity to talk one-on-one more about it and getting to know each other, right? And so there's a gradient that we're going to go up, and it seems to be much, much more effective then the person that's on there is like, I need money. I got a deal next week. I'm so desperate. I'll pay you 87% interest and blah, 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 blah. No, that deal is not going to get funded because that person sounds too desperate. They're skipping steps, right? So anytime you're making a post, the next step is what you're selling. In our case, it's going to the website. And when they go to Christy and I's website, they learn all about us. They learn all about the business. They learn how we do business. They learn, um, they can see little case studies from other people that have been our lenders. Right. And then the call to action on the website is scheduled meeting. Go, click here, go to the calendar, pick a time that works for you. Right. And then once they schedule a meeting, we call them up and we start building that relationship. Right. And I think that's the best way to do it. Right. It's, remember this, Chris, Chris and Steven, the founders of Private Money Club, they always mm-hmm. talk about how this is like the dating website for money. Right. Like the Tinder for money. But let's be real. If you're looking for a If you're taking this serious, you're not looking for like the one night stand. You're looking for that long term relationship. You're looking for that that person that, you know, you can do deals with over and over and over and over again, which is which is extremely important. Right. So your real estate business lives and dies by the network and the connections that you make. I mean, after all, your network. Well, it's your net worth. That's what you always heard. Right. If that's an area where you desire improvement, well, Private Money Club is for you. 
PMC saves you precious time and money by bringing the real estate world, well, right to you, right in the palm of your hand. So get in on the action like so many others have by going to privatemoneyclub.com and sign up. All right, so speaking of building uh, good relationships and doing deals over and over and over again and doing things the right way, let's see if, Christy, are you on here? I don't, uh, can you type in the chat box so I know, uh, I don't know, maybe you changed your name. There she is. My wife is on the call, you guys. It's our 11 year anniversary coming up and I, I can't wait to celebrate with her tomorrow. It's actually Saturday. But the, um, you know, kids are home, so we want to get some alone time. So we're going to take the day Friday and just do some hiking and having a good time. Um, but she's out on the scene right now. There, She's, uh, does your camera work, Christy? Are you decent from the neck up? Can you turn your camera on? There we go. My lighting's great. Sorry. Let me see. if I can. Oh, I'm like an angel. Look at that gleam of light shining down there. <laughs> yeah, you got like the halo over your head with that goofy mirror on, on the couch behind yes. you. <laughs> all right cool hey guys let's um i'm gonna introduce you to my wife christy duckett harris um she, you know and she won't give herself props she's just that type of person there's no ego um but if you if you google christy you'll see that she's been all over the world teaching people about real estate investing she's done over five thousand one one-on-one coaching sessions over the last 10 years um she's just an amazing human being above all else and one of the things that we've always done within our business, you know, we live in here in South Carolina and I'll let her talk a little bit about the mobile home business and how we got into doing and flipping mobile homes and stuff. But, you know, if you're a real estate investor, there's a, it's not a matter of if, but a matter of when you're going to come across a mobile home opportunity, especially if you're here in the Carolinas and, and really anywhere. And, you know, if you're not educated around that top, that topic of how to make money with them, you're probably going to say, yeah, thanks, but no thanks, or that's not for me. And thankfully for this woman here, um, she got educated in mobile homes a long time ago and has been a big advocate for it and, and uh, handles that part of our real estate investing business. And it's actually turning into one of our number one income streams. Yep. All right. Awesome, guys. I'm coming to you live from actually one of our properties currently. I've been around looking at property and running around all day. So when Noah asked me to chime in, I was like, I may not look my best, but I'm going to jump on here to help everyone. So um, as Noah said, our investing background is an array of everything. Today, I was actually out looking at a um, multi-unit triplex with three mobile homes on the land, right? How many of you have come across something like that or seen an opportunity with a mobile home? And then you said, oh my gosh, I hate trailers. I want nothing to do with it and passed over the opportunity. So many years ago, I was fortunate enough to be mentored in mobile homes back in 2007. Uh, right when I started my real estate investing career, I came across mobile and manufactured homes and kept thinking there's something really unique about these. And I think one of the best unique parts was nobody was doing them. Nobody wanted to mess with them. So to me, it created this awesome opportunity. And in the beginning, there weren't a lot of resources out there because again, you know, the internet was just starting to take off then. So I kind of dove into as many books as I could. Um, a great read and mentor of mine, Lonnie Scruggs mentored me. Um, and he wrote a book called Deals on Wheels. And that's what kind of like pushed me to back then thinking there's it's affordable housing. I'm guessing you can flip these. I'm guessing you can wholesale these. But what I started finding uh, through my investing journey that there were a lot of weird nuances to them. Like, you know, agents don't even properly still to this day necessarily understand them. So you get all these mixed reviews and I just want to help people make money. That's what I do. I love coaching. I love helping. And I think more than now, there is a time and need for affordable housing. Um, but there's also just, you know, a need for us to grow our money and look at options that are unique and different and for us to create passive income, right? And become great lenders on deals that are possible. So throughout that time period, I kept I kept getting people continuing to ask me about mobile homes and I coached them. And what happened was, you know, during COVID, everybody was locked inside. We were, we were those people too. And I said, you know what? For years, I've tried to write a book, but I never finished it. I mean, I can barely read a book sometimes, let alone write a book. So <laughs> I thought, let me film and record a mobile home course to teach people how to invest. So Noah and I literally with a uh, videographer were in a mobile home filming everything about mobile homes. 
And what I found is that still helped people, but I sort of felt like I was disservicing people because not everyone really learns by just watching a video, right? There's still pieces that they feel like they need someone to ask or they need like a very fluid, here's the direct things you need to do. So that's how the mobile home take action challenge came along. I'm all about action uh, because look, I'm one of those people. I have to be held accountable. It's like going to the gym, right? Like forget it. If I have to hold myself accountable every day, I just have not been motivated enough to get there. But if I have a partner meeting me to go work out, I'm going to show up for them more so than myself. So the mobile home challenge starts and kicks off May 19th. And I've done quite a few of these and, and they've been great because what I think it helps people do is connect the dots on things they've been missing. And it also helps have an accountability factor of like really dumbing it down. Like here's the couple of things you need to know and here's the couple of things you need to do. And I know this works because I've had people go through it, follow it and do it. So I just think this is, if you're really focused on and not even, but you are, you're here, you're focused on lending maybe, but I think eventually you're gonna turn a corner and say, maybe I wanna invest, but a house is very scary. This is a great opportunity to come in and say, okay, I do have this lead. I can look at one of these mobile homes. Now they definitely make so much more sense to me. And guys, exactly what Noah said, we're making better returns on flipping and wholesaling our manufactured homes more so than we are um, our single family homes with less permitting, with less time frame. The deal Noah's throwing up, and I don't show this to be like, oh, this is great. We made this much money. You don't care. What do you care? That that changes my life, not yours, right? But what I'm telling you is you can do it. <laughs> That's what's awesome. So we bought this property um, back in February, the beginning of February, and we literally just closed on and sold this property this week. And it was such a cool deal because it was brought to us by a local agent. And the reason she brought it to us is because she specifically knew that I do manufactured homes which was great because there's nobody else out there kind of branding themselves as that person. And the person selling needed to move quickly. It was a situation where they lost um, a parent and they just wanted to sell it. It had become a headache for them. So we were able to help out the seller, help out our agent. And then what was really cool is we went to closing and the agent that brought a buyer, we knew personally as well. And it was a nice couple moving down from Ohio that now has home ownership and fell in love with the piece of land it was on. This was on six acres with the pond. Yeah, and lots of and that, and what we're finding is you know we always talk about having a niche, right, guys, and having something specific that you look for. So um, niche is rich, right? So what Christy and I do is you know she focuses and scours for manufactured homes on land, knowing that people are selling, cashing out in different states or whatever, or even even living here. They just want to be out. They don't want to be in the city anymore. They want to have a little acreage. Uh, to live on and do and so we look for properties that are at least uh, you know what what's your minimum christy is it one and a half or is it two or acreage wise you know it depends on where we are on the outskirts i'd love to have an acre plus but listen we subdivided one with a house on it and it was 0.5 acres but because of the location there was a high demand so so that's what i teach it's not just hey here's how to do the mobile home but like what are the variables and factors you should be looking at in your market like why is this working someone just actually asked me as well um, do you use your own money or do you use OPM? We always use other people's money. Could I use my own money? Absolutely. But um, what you're thinking in your mind and Noah actually just showed you with the lender, which is really actually a cool thing because the lender was an agent that we used to fund a lot of our deals. I mean, I'm sorry to sell a lot of our deals. She saw how much money we were making our lenders. And she said, Hey, I want to lend now too. I have an IRA. What the heck? Like, use my money. Um, so we were able to convert her really easily. But what what was is great about this is, you know, I'm able now to think outside of the box. Hey, maybe there's a piece of land that's in a good area and there's not a manufactured home on it. Could I potentially buy a brand new manufactured home and put it on that land? Possibly. But what do I need to do to find that out? And there's people in our local market and us included doing this. They're finding and scouting out land with acreage. They're clearing the land. They're putting the septic on. They're putting the well or city water. And then they're plopping a brand new mobile home and flipping it without even doing any of the reno side. You know, we're buying deeply discounted manufacturer homes where we don't own the land and we're just selling them. I coach someone locally that's doing that. He's essentially just moving the home to another buyer. So there's so much opportunity in these because they're not cookie cutter 
it's just a house on land and all we can do is, you know, rent, wholesale, flip it. There's so many other things you can do with these. That's what I like. So to answer your question, we do use private money. That's, that's, there are some hard money lenders out here locally in our area that will lend on flipping them, um, but not necessarily buy and hold. That's where the, where it gets tricky, but all of this guys is secured, right? Just like a house, as Noah said, like you have a deed, you have everything in place. This home was attached to the land. It was detitled. It, it has actually was able to get FHA financing and conventional. So all the things, a house, the same with that. A lot of people don't know that. So our lender was okay with lending because we had the comparables. The, the money was secure and it's a great investment. It's it's a no-lose situation. Yep. And she used, um, you know, I have the numbers here because I know we have a lot of lenders on the call. And just to kind of show you guys, like she used some money from her LLC and then she used some money from that she had in her IRA. And, you know, it's good to note too, like that this is someone who we've probably done maybe five or six deals with over the last three years. It just kind of keeps, you know, uh, for the right deal. We, we we try to make sure that we keep her busy and keep her money working for her. And um, we've, we've really helped her grow both of those accounts significantly over the last uh, few years, which is cool to see. So yeah. I got some before and after pictures too. Um, I put, by the way, I put these slides together last minute. So Christy doesn't know what she's looking at until it gets on the screen. So, um, but, but she, she, she's just going to share, uh, she's a pro and then these are our deals. So she knows what she's looking at. Yeah. Here's some more lender stuff. Yeah. yeah this one was smaller. Cool. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. This one was cool because they're like the one I looked at today, actually, um, locally, there's a piece of real estate. So there was a duplex on it. That was the real value, right? The mobile home was the additional added income on it. So the duplex with the mobile home was, it's very common to find that in the South. And what's interesting, guys, most of these deals are looked over by investors because they have a mobile home. And he, we ended up buying this to keep it like as a passive income property forever in our mind. That's what we were going to do. We actually no, noticed there was a need in the market of 1031 exchanges. So I said, let's just throw it on the market because there's very low inventory and see if somebody, another investor might buy it. And it actually ended up being a doctor. And we got to sit at closing with him. And it was funny because his wife was like, I passed over going to look at this deal like five times, but there was nothing else in the market. So I finally thought like, okay, we got to go see it. She goes, I'd never been in a mobile home. They, they had actually moved here from Seattle. And she was like, I was in shock at how nice it was. I just couldn't believe that. She's like, so now it's changed my whole perception. And that's really my goal is to like open your mind to that. Um, but you can see what the lender made. I mean, it was a great opportunity and deal for them. Um, I don't know yeah. if you want to add anything on that, Noah. Yeah, they're just, and they're, and they're also good. You guys, if you're in the, if you're a lender on here and you're like, man, you know, I, I you know, Chris Noggle always says, if you're not first, you're last. I need to make sure I get first position, uh, mortgages and first position liens. Well, you know, if you're, if there's a price point, that's like an actual house where you can have a first position and it's not like a house that's about to fall over and, and needs to be torn down like these uh, these manufactured homes provide opportunities for lenders to be first position at much smaller price points than it might be at uh, single family homes right which is pretty cool and i wanted to throw in i saw um questions in the q a so i kind of answered that about the opm rather than your own money a lot of lenders are not keen and open to lending like like the traditional lenders and the hard money because again like you know, they're still in their mind thinking of it as um, a depreciating asset. It's a trailer. It's not as solid as a house. That's that's the negative connotation with it. So private money, I always just use it, one, even on our houses, because I want to help other people make money, right, and get out of their job or just to succeed in life. Um, but two, because it can be trickier with mobile homes. And that's, again, why I teach the nuances. Um, can you invest as a lender with, say, a small amount, such as 10K? You can. So we have some lenders that have lent on homes where we don't necessarily own the land. So we buy mobile homes and mobile home parks. Sometimes we're deeply discounted, which come with a title, just like a car. And we're able to then either fix them up, sell them off to another investor and flip them, right? Or we can do like a retail owner finance to someone or different things. So giving you that idea in your mind, there's a lot of an opportunity for the smaller price points to do that. So your money would be secured by the title of the home. Again, you know, you still want to check your comparables. I do teach that because that's huge. You know, you don't want to get something, you live 10 states away or five states away, and now you've got this manufactured home and you're like, what the heck do I do with it? 
So um, you can with the smaller amounts. The Question. Age yeah, oh, age yeah. of the mobile home. Jamie said, do you need to pay... Do you need to pay attention to the age of the mobile homes? It seems like there's a bunch that are in good shape, but they're 40 years old. How does the rehab for a mobile home compare to rehabs for regular single family houses? So Jamie, this is a great question. I had an investor contact me yesterday um, and he, I was actually driving, we're renovating um, a house in Lake Lore, North Carolina. I was, I was literally stuck on the interstate for an hour. So I was like, oh, well, I can just answer messages. I'm not moving. So um, he texted me and said, hey, listen, do you know anyone local that will refinance a property that's a 1969, I believe it was, mobile home on land? I said, no. I said, absolutely not. Because what's happening is there's a certain year um, after 1976, June 15th, that's when lenders started lending on the manufactured homes. So anything prior to that, if you're buying a private money or someone else's and your goal is to cash out refi, you're going to be stuck in that deal because there's not lenders that will do anything unless you have private money set up. So the age of the home is very, very important for financing on the back end and how you're reselling. Um, as for renovation, what I love about them is I don't have to go in and pull permits because I'm not taking out low bearing walls. I'm not because it's a manufactured home. It's like, a, especially if it's a double wide, it's two pieces, right? Structurally, it's not like a house. Um, and the repairs are much less. Now, if it's a shingle roof, it's going to be a comparable shingle house, you know, HVAC electrician, I still use those people. However, a licensed GC on renovation, I can really, and, and what I'm doing is using insured handymen that understand renovation. So they're, the cost is much cheaper. So yes, to answer your question, it's, it's cheaper in the sense. And then question from Morgan, do you run into resistance from private lenders dealing with manufactured houses? Not in private money club, because that's why I'm here educating everyone that you can do them, right? So, so outside of this, um, our lenders haven't given us resistance, but again, uh, we have a proven track record with them. So they have the confidence in who we are. Um, but two, the ones on land that are detitled are truly like a real piece of real estate. So there should be no reason they should give resistance because you can resell that, you can pull comps, you can do all the same things as a house. So I think it's just almost educating them in that facet um, and also getting educated, knowing what the heck you're talking about. Just like Noah teaches with lending, you know, everyone thinks they can just go to a family member and spit out what Noah's saying and it'll work. And it doesn't work that easily, you know, because they're going to ask certain questions you might not know offhand. That's why you're on here getting educated. Um, but I don't think we, we don't meet the resistance. You know, we, we find the lenders because if the deal's a deal and the numbers make sense, we've never had a problem. I'm going to show some before and after photos, Christy. We still got about 11 minutes, um, but I do have a question in the chat from Annette. She says, I've seen several abandoned mobile home projects in my area. How can I find out what happened to them? Any oh, tip? that's good. Sorry. Sorry. That, is that a lead? Is that a lead? You better answer it. It's actually, um, I'm laughing. It's our agent from earlier on the deal we probably looked at because I had her go to them with a bunch of questions. So, <laughs> um, Okay, so looking at this one, what did you ask me? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Annette, Annette said, hey, I've seen several abandoned mobile home projects. How can I find out what happened to them? That's a great question. Um, and a couple of questions for you. Were they on land or are they in a park? Because that might matter. If they're in a park, um, I'm going to guess like someone owns the land of that park. There's like one predominant owner. So why are those homes abandoned? Maybe they bought that park with abandoned homes um, already in it. Um, if it's on, on land, land, on land, so, on land. Okay, good. So you should be able to go in and pull tax records on that. Um, if you have the address of the property now, why they're like that again, that just takes due diligence, contacting the owner, going and finding a neighbor and asking them, like, if you see like, okay, there's this pocket of five, what's going on? Are they five individual or is that actually a park that's been abandoned? I'm not sure. Right. I'm not sure what market you're in, but really it goes down to, just doing some due diligence of pulling tax records. All right. So here's some before and afters. This was the house we just sold this week on um, Tuesday. Um, anything you want to point out here? I'll let you walk um, through it. Just let me know when you're ready for the, for that. And in the chat box, can we get a couple is right? Cause it's the before, right? So then when we show the afters, we'll do the ahs. So that's the before. So it doesn't look that bad, right? But ew, the paint's kind of, eh. I actually initially wanted to keep the paint and um, it was funny. We were laughing about it because 
I was like, it's not that bad. And the agent's like, it's kind of pink when you got there. And I'm like, okay, I'm just trying to be cheap. You're right. Whatever. We'll paint the house. So you've, you've got the after. Yes. The before is okay. This is the kitchen. So as you can see, I mean, it's a, it's not an awful property, but there's just, you know, the cabinets kind of look dingy. The countertops are older, cheap, and we're trying to sell this for a much higher, nicer price point. So this is the after. The difference is ridiculous on that, right? So this is actually, we stage all of our homes. Some people try to skimp and cut corners. I was one of those people. I will acknowledge that. Um, and then I realized people as beautiful as your home is people can't see the vision. So we found a local staging company that's amazing. And this literally, if I showed you this picture, apples to apples of our single family homes, we use the same format. It looks exactly the same. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So it was beautiful. And I knew when someone walked in that home, they would have the same feeling we did and you do by looking at these and they would buy it. Yep. So um, now what was cool about this property, I'll tell you, um, the gentleman that did own it was a, a woodsmith, his daughter told me. So he did a lot of woodwork. There was a shop behind it. So there was a lot of cool stuff that he had done in there, but obviously that doesn't translate to everyone thinking it's cool. So <laughs> we went in and whited out the trim and kind of did everything and went through and that's the same living room. Can you believe How much that? was it to stage those rooms? Um, it was, so this was a, this is a double wide, really big. So for, I would say like our 1200 square foot and below homes, she's doing them for 1500 bucks. And that's like a living room, a kitchen and a bedroom. This one was 2200 bucks, but that was a much bigger house. She stays two living rooms, a kitchen all around the board. Dining room. Well worth the money. Yep. And it's a three month minimum, three month minimum. And which, you know, when you stage your house like this and you make it look like this, it's moving so fast. Yeah. Rick said, nice. So worth it. It is. We trip over dollars. I tell people when you're negotiating the deal on the front end, find that stager and go ahead and account for it. So it was it was 2200 flat rate for three months. Flat rate for three months. Cool. And we sold this in from the time we bought it to the time we sold it in 99 days. Yeah, it was Christy, really quick. I don't know. I don't know if we have time to hit all of these things, but you know, there is some differences and some nuances with between mobile homes and single family homes that can trip up people. And I know that's one of the things you help people with. And um, anything on here you want to hit? Um, I will tell you like a HUD and data plate, like what the heck does that even mean, right? If you're new to manufactured or mobile homes, you're not going to know that from a single family home. So the way in 1976, when HUD created new guidelines of homes, creating them to a better quality, holding the manufacturers to a better standard, each piece of the home or home. So if it's a double Y, there will be two HUD tags on it. If it's a single Y, there will be one HUD tag. And they created that basically saying, this it was held to a certain standard and this home is eligible for financing. Um, a data plate, that's actually a plate on the inside of the home. It's always in a tricky spot. You got to find it. Sometimes they're lost and removed and there's, you know, you got to track those down. Um, but that tells where the manufactured home was created and what wind zone is in. So for instance, I'm selling a home now that is wind zone one. So there's wind zone one, two, and three. I cannot move my home to a wind zone two. That's a coastal, like a Charleston, South Carolina and everything I have has to stay inland. If something's coming from the coast, um, it can come inland. That's fine. But we can't. It's like hurricane proof, right? They have them built to certain standards. So just knowing those weird things, um, is it detitled or titled? That's big. I won't even go into that because that takes, you know, 15 minutes. But it's really confusing to people and agents. I'll give you a, another example of something. That house we just sold had skirting on the bottom. Okay. You guys have seen, I know you've driven by and seen manufactured homes with the mobile home skirting and then some with the bricking. The perception is the brick is a permanent foundation. That brick does not matter. It does not matter skirting. Even though I had skirting on that home, I could have sold that to an FHA buyer, conventional buyer um, or VA. However, every agent that called kept asking my agent, I don't think it's a permanent foundation because there is um, skirting on it. And like that has nothing to do with it. It all has to do how the home is tied to the ground. So I realized how many agents are uneducated in our market and we're skipping over this deal and they had buyers, but they missed out because their agent didn't know what they were doing. So even if you're on here and you're an agent and you've been skipping over manufactured homes, you could brand yourself the go-to person by learning this. Beautiful. Beautiful. Love it. All right, cool. So uh, guys, if you, um, are interested in joining Christy? Uh, we start May nineteenth, uh, and it's twice a week. What are the? It's Sundays and Thursdays, right, Christy? Is that tell tell them about the format of like how how it all works? 
Yes. Can I, can I give a shout out though, really fast to Jennifer Pertel? Uh, yes. She's amazing. She is a member here. I've coached her, been friends with her for many years. She just Bravo bought her first mobile home park last year, um, which is really cool. It's doing well. She sent me a picture today from it. I won't share that. It was quite comical. If you're in the mobile home business, you will see some unique characters in your park. Um, but she's the prime example of learning what to do and was able to create a great opportunity with that. So I just want to give a shout out. Um, but the class is held Sunday evening, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I, I know a lot of classes like Noah starts on a Monday. I prefer to start on a Sunday because it's before the week you get in, you know, your heads in that space of, all right, what do I have to do this week? Right. Because Monday we're already in the work grind and trying to get through the day. So we start uh, Sunday evening, 6 p.m. It's about an hour and a half. I, I make it very simple, guys. I mean, to me, uh, we have a child, we have a younger child with a disability. Uh, he's autistic and simple. I've learned simple things matter. So for him, things are very straight forward and to the point, And that's helped him get to the point of verbalization. I feel like the same thing with learning this. Keep it super simple. So I go through a training of what to look for. And then I let you leave there Sunday evening with homework. And we follow up Thursday, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And we go through if you had questions on the homework. Okay. So really simple. Each week builds on the next week to make it really simple. Um, because again, I want you getting out there to do a deal. Like I want you to do this. If I make it sound so difficult, you're never going to do it. If it sounds like it's one extra thing to add on your plate, I know this, like I'm a busy mom, right? And I'm like, I'm not going to do it. So it's really just kind of keeping that in order. Everything is recorded. So I also realize Everyone is probably working, has children, has parents they're taking care of. You have your own life. Maybe you're single and you don't have time either. I try to make it easy in the fact that you can go back and listen to all the recordings. And what I've also done is I've created this. I've added so much content because I might not be able to cover everything or you have a question. I know you're going to have that question. And when you do, I create a video and upload it in there for you because I know questions stop you from taking action. So yeah, this, this is, is yeah, this is yeah, this is um, this is the January's class. So the back office. So any students of Christie's course, um, she actually uploads. I was going through this and checking it out. Um, all the recordings from your sessions and bonus recordings that she has that kind of explain your homework assignments and do. Um, she also has case studies on there with like land, home development deals, rehab case studies, um, Airbnb being. A manufactured home, uh, swapping out case study, and then uh, financing with one of our financing partners, Ann Noble. Yes, she's awesome. And we get the together all the time if I've got a trick question and I'm not sure, which is very rare. I know she knows the answer. So finding the right people to put in your business. She's on the lending side. So, and then snippets here of uh, kind of like back office of like, if you, you know, all of these videos are about five to eight minutes long. And real quick, hey, I need I need a answer on purchasing and paperwork. And you can just click on the link and get the answer that you need, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, I try to make it super simple. Dumb it down. Right. Like easy is better. Um, is does the challenge Morgan asked, does the challenge include raising capital for the deal um, at the time? So the benefit is you have my husband right on weekly is <laughs> talking about raising money and doing he teaches that. But I have um, put a section in there, a mini section on that, too. Um, but Noah's the best at that. That's all he does within our business. He documents, he deals with our attorneys. That's his side. We stay in our lane of our business and that's solely what he does. Cool. He does a lot too, but that's one big piece. <laughs> it's like 10% me and 90% Christy. Don't, I'll, I'll be the first to admit that. So this was awesome. If you guys have any questions, you can, I'll put um, my email in the chat. You can email, I can get you in touch with Christy and I'll encourage, um, Jacob can post the link here if, you know, to make a move, you know, hopefully if you're tuning in for the first time, hopefully you go and create a private money club profile, right? Um, if you're tuning in for, I don't know, you've been here for a little while now and you're ready to go next level. Let's, let's get you into the accelerator class uh, with private money club. Or if you're like, man, I'm driving by these opportunities every single day. Um, you know, I'm not really, you know, I got to figure out how to take advantage of some of these mobile home leads then um, I would encourage, encourage you to join Christy on Sunday and Thursdays uh, for the mobile home challenge. But this has been an awesome call. Um, and I really appreciate everybody that's on here. Thank you. We're going to have a great time tomorrow. 
celebrating 11 years with my with my mobile home queen. I love it. <laughs> he never thought that, guys. And listen, it took him some years to turn around on those, but now he's on board. <laughs> I just like, you know, I like it because I mean, if you've if you haven't been to been in a mobile home recently, and when I say mobile home, I really mean manufactured home. Like they are no longer called mobile homes. Like they're manufactured homes. Like if you go to a dealership and you walk in, it's nicer than a lot of houses that we're in. I mean, the the, the actual houses themselves. And I saw a question on here about modulars as well. Any thoughts on modulars, Christy? I I, I hate yes. that we got to the question so late, but I saw it pop up and I just remembered. Yeah, modular homes, we don't do a lot with them in our area only because there's not a lot of them. However, I have a student um, that I've coached in North Carolina. They're very popular and in Virginia because what you're starting to see is and some of those markets are getting rid, rid of manufactured homes because of the stigma. So what they're actually doing now is saying, okay, well, I don't want to, you know, stick build a home. It's so expensive. I was actually talking to our agent about that today. I said, it's just not even affordable. So a lot of people are now reverting to modular homes. Now a modular home, the cool part about that, a modular home is compared against a single family home. So the comps actually could be unlimited and much higher, but I think they're a great avenue. I have a student, um, Ronnie Gentry, who's part of Private Money Club, who is doing pretty much, I'd say the big bulk of his business is modular homes. And he has a dealership that he buys them from and he puts them on the land and yeah, it's working out. So that's a whole nother avenue. Cool. Yeah. I mean, it's like, why, why even fix and flips? I mean, that, this is the internal argument that I'm having with myself. You know, we did this beautiful house downtown Columbia in old Shandon in the ritzy neighborhood where all everyone wants to be that's on the up and up. And, you know, that's where all like the city councilmen live, you know, in Columbia or whatever. Right. It's a nice neighborhood. It's a nice neighborhood. And I mean, the amount of permits that were needed, it was a $250,000 renovation budget and it took uh nine months start to finish to take that on this like beautiful hgtv project and then here we are making the same amount of money without even really doing a whole lot on a manufactured home so um i'm so that, yeah. that deal took seven months you see he's not in the field if it took nine months i'd be mad seven i was upset too. <laughs> No, but he, he's absolutely right. I mean, when I go through those hurdles, you know why we keep doing the homes? We have great opportunities and relationships we build and the need to help people in the right direction. We're actually working a single family home deal. That was a referral from a good friend who was a probate attorney. And the gentleman and his mom lost their father. Unbeknownst to them, his father had cancer. He knew it. He didn't tell anyone and passed away in a day's time. And they were left with this rental property headache. So I think we keep doing them. I do in my mind just to help people and they can trust us that we'll get it done. Um, but I prefer to stick with the mobile homes. They're much less stressed. They're moved a lot faster and the profits are amazing. And again, like the people I'm sending across that are buying this, it's creating a great affordable housing situation for young couples, young singles, older singles, couples that can find affordable housing and still live comfortably, which is important. 100%. Cool. All right, guys, I got uh, time for pick up the kids. Got to sign off. School's getting out and it's the best part of the day and the worst part of the day. And if you're a parent, you know exactly what I mean. Got to go pick up the kids. Um, love you guys. All right. So I'll see you back here next Thursday, one o'clock. We do this every Thursday where we talk private money. And if there's something that you would like to hear, a topic you'd like to learn more about, be sure to reach out to the team, let us know, and we'll try to make it happen. All right. So thanks, Christy. Love you. See ya at home. All right. Love you. Bye. All right. Bye, everybody.